I'm going to talk primarily about soft hammer percussion uh, in producing a bifacial tool. This is a core uh, of obsidian. Um, it's a glass-like material, uh, very easy to, to flake. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to produce a series of uh, hard hammer percussion flakes using my, my hard hammer. And then I'm going to switch to soft hammer percussion and I'm going to produce uh, a biface using soft hammer percussion. Uh, to start off with, um, basically, I'm going to produce some flakes that I can then use to make a biface from. And this is where it. There we go. Simple, easy. Uh, I know Eugene talked about it yesterday, um, but this is basically the. The easiest part of, of making a stone tool is taking the hard hammer and producing a flake. Uh, this flake here could actually be used to produce um, pretty much any kind of tool you want. Um, it's a bit small for the biface that I'm going to produce, so, um, but it definitely can be used to produce just about any kind of tool. Um, I'll make one more just so that everyone sees that I can do it. And what I'm doing right now is um, I'm actually, because you can see that this is quite an angular piece of stone, um, I have to find the right angles um, to produce the flake. I can't just hit it willy-nilly. So um, because it's so angular, I have, to, I have to fudge it a wee bit and actually make the angles for me. And what I'm doing is I'm trying to look for a face like this here where I can produce produce a flake off of it, and this is going to be the area that I strike it from. Um, you'll actually be able to see it quite well, is there's a ridge right through here. I'm actually using that as a way to guide the type of flake that I'm, I'm going to produce. Um, with this ridge here, I'm, I'm more likely to produce a flake that will, that will follow it, whereas if I'm out here where there aren't no ridges, it's more likely to sort of fan out. So um, that's the other thing I'm looking for. <clears throat> Perfect. So there you can see the flake actually sort of followed that ridge. Had I pre knocked the flake over here, it would have fanned out a bit more. The mass of this flake definitely follows, follows this ridge. It fans out a wee bit, but you can see that it's, it's quite thin out here. Um, but anyways, this, this is uh, something that you could actually produce a biface from or any kind of tool as well. Um, but because it's small and it's a little hard to see, I'm going to switch to something bigger. Um, and also switch techniques, which will be soft hammer percussion. So this piece of obsidian was actually a large flake that was knocked off a quite a big core. Um, the striking platform would have been here, and this would have been hard hammer percussion. And I'll obviously, I've trimmed it up a wee bit just to get rid of some of the sort of the less desirable material. So now it should be nice and solid and very usable for soft hammer percussion. So a lot of the stuff that you do uh, is, is in fact blind. Um, basically, there, there's different ways you can do it, but for me and, and my comfort, I find that me working straight up and down and all the stuff that comes off, comes off the bottom, I know that if I wanted to, I could actually set it up so that I'm working at it this way and I can still see the face where the core is coming off, but then I'd have to swing like this and it isn't very comfortable for me. I, I know lots of people have actually do it this way, and they do it quite well. But for me, it's easier to do everything underneath. Um, and it also allows me the opportunity to um, support a big rock like this easier, um, because I can use my leg and my hand at the same time. Whereas if I'm holding it like this and striking like that, I don't have that same support. I have to use all my I can only use my hand, not my leg so much. Whereas if I hold it like this, I barely, I'm just holding it in place kind of thing, right? And so striking down is, is a lot more, is a lot better for me. So now let's talk about some soft hammer percussion. Um, it's slightly different than, than hard hammer percussion because uh, while obviously I'm using different tools, I'm, I'm using, this is a moose antler and this is this is the, the rosette, or the part that sticks in the moose's head, 
and basically I just grind it down. It's also the densest part of the antler. You can see on this side, it's quite marrowy. And so I like to keep using the densest part. If I'm producing a, a much larger flake, I'll use this one, right? And the same thing again, this is the rosette and um, it's definitely the most dense part of it. There's the, the spongy stuff on the inside and it's, it's not very good um, for making, for being a working end of the tool. So, um, all right, back to soft hammer percussion. So basically, I'm gonna be doing the, the exact same thing I was doing with a hard hammer. Um, the, the biggest difference, and this is why soft hammer percussion is probably the hardest part of, of learning how to, to make a stone tool, is um, my working surface has diminished significantly. Um, with a hard hammer, I would have, say, this entire edge to work with. With this, when I'm doing soft hammer percussion, I'm really working just along this edge here. And so getting your hand and eye coordination to be able to strike that, takes that's where the years of, of practice come in. Um, the beauty of soft hammer percussion is, again, like with hard hammer percussion, I can produce the type of flakes that I want using this type of tool. And there are some fairly significant differences in the type of flakes that I'm going to produce. Um, actually, maybe I'll show you that right off the bat. With hard hammer percussion, you'll typically have uh, a much wider, uh, thicker striking platform. Um, and that's fairly characteristic of hard hammer percussion. But when you're using soft hammer percussion, you'll get a much different type of striking platform. It's actually uh, quite a bit smaller and um, it's generally narrower as well, right? And the beauty of, of soft hammer percussion and as, as making any stone tool, the type of striking platform that you have, if all you have are these flakes, you can actually tell the stage of production that you're at, right? you know that this type of striking platform is generally early on in the process, right? Because it's, it's hard hammer percussion. <clears throat> Even within soft hammer percussion, you can definitely see the difference between early stage, um, early, the early stages of making a bifaces versus the later stages. This one is narrow, um, but it doesn't have any flake scarring on it. It doesn't have any grinding. It doesn't have anything, right? So you know that this was something that was produced early on in the soft hammer percussion process. This one has some flaking on it and some grinding on it. So you know that this is later on in the process. And then this, this platform here, same thing. It's narrow and it's wide, but it's got a lot of flake scarring on it. And it actually has some platform grinding and everything like that. So just based on the type of flakes that you find, you can actually tell what stage of biface production that you're at. If you have, if you have early stage soft hammer percussion and late stage, uh, platforms, you can, you can pretty much guarantee that they were taking a, a cobble and working it down bifacially.